Living in might not be legal and pauper, but that doesn't matter. Today, we are exhuming the dead, cascade cards, plus exhum and pauper. This deck list is sweet, you're gonna wanna see it. This is it, this is the deck. Cards that cost three or greater, plus exhum and cascade cards. That is the general idea behind this strategy. It's the same thing as modern living end, but brought to pauper. So obviously living end is a rare, we don't have access to that in this format. But what we do have access to is exhum, a two mana sorcery. Each player returns a creature card from their graveyard to the battlefield, which is fairly similar to living end. Each player gets something back. It's symmetrical creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield. You don't get that wrath of God effect, but that's fine. This card is good enough for the purposes of Pauper. So we're trying to put large creatures to the graveyard efficiently. So we have Troll of Casa Doom from Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth alongside Oliphant, Generous Ent, Striped River Winder, and then Mere Shell Crab. All of these are relatively new printings except for maybe the Striped River Winder. But the idea is that we have Disruption via Mere Shell Crab along with some really powerful creatures. With the Blue Splash, you gain a Hexproof creature against decks with tons of removal and snuff outs and things like that, which I think is pretty helpful and the real draw to playing blue. We also have Lurian Revealed, which helps us refill our hand later. Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth was a huge upgrade to this deck for primarily these reasons. The basic land cyclers really fixed the mana base as well as gave the deck a lot of power. So we're playing a four color mana base with tons of dual lands in it and we get to because of all these efficient land cyclers It's truly beautiful, but the next core is really just exhume violent outburst and demonic dread So you cast these cards and then you look for a card that costs two or less the only one we play is exhume So this means that we have 12 copies of exhume thanks to our cascade spells so we put a large creature into play, and then we wrath them using Suffocating Fumes or Arms of Hadar. And then we attack with our large creatures, we ultimately win the game. So you can't play anything in our sideboard, like Cast Into the Fire, to support our deck because we always want to Cascade into Exhum. So because of that, our sideboard has things like Fairy Macabre, Ingot Chewer, Gnaw to the Bone, Reverent Sounds specifically for Bogles, and the Deadshot Minotaur for the Fairy decks of the format. Yes, this deck has a lot of tap lands in it, but I promise that it's not slow. I've played this deck a ton in the practice room. I haven't played it in a league yet. This will be my very first league, but things like Simeon Spirit Guide can lead to some pretty explosive draws with turn two Exhum and, you know, tons of other things. I think it's going to be great. I'm really excited to play this in my very first league. Let's see how we do today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicsperm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. I am so excited for this video. You have no idea. I've been working on this deck for weeks. I'm really excited to finally get to play it. We're on the draw. I'm going to keep this. I mean, we have ex essentially double exhum in our hand. We have Mirshell Crab. Looks like our opponent's on terror, so I probably want to sit on this Bajooka Bog for a little bit. We find Lurian Revealed. We'll just play our Aquafire and pass. Okay. We'll draw for turn, another Violent Outburst. Let's cycle the Lorien Revealed. Let's go get a tap land. We probably want one that makes red. So we'll grab the Molten Tributary. I believe that's how you say that. And we'll pass the turn. They cycle their own copy of Lorien Revealed. They have Thought Scour themselves. Chainer's Edict. No creature though. And they're passing the turn. I like to see that. Seeming Spirit Guide. We're going to pass. We need to counterspell something with the Mirror Shell Crab before we can put it into play. Another Thought Scour. Spell Pierce and Contaminated Aquifier. Mental Note. All right, so they're definitely Demir Terror. Gurmag Angler. I'm going to attempt to Mirror Shell Crab this. Goodbye, Angler. Unfortunately, the five main deck Wraths we have in this matchup are absolutely terrible. Uh, not ideal. And speaking of which, we just drew one. We'll Bajooka Bog them, exile their graveyard. Both their creature and their Chainer's Edict. We'll pass. They don't try to cast anything on the end step. 
Brainstorm. Sure. They find land. And I could try two Violent Outburst here. They have five in hand. Let's do it. Violent Outburst. Cascade happens. We will cast Exhum. They counter target spell. Okay, Violent Outburst goes to the graveyard. Now they're at four cards in hand. Say we try it again. Another Violent Outburst. This time we can pay for a spell pierce. Do you have another counter spell? Hey, it's getting crabby. We will pass the turn. So two exhumes down. And if they have a snuff out, they have to pay three life for it. I'm sorry, three mana and four life. Six mana. Gurmag the hard way. I love it. All right. We will cycle the suffocating fumes. Generous Ent. We're one mana. Oh, no, I can cast that using the spirit guide. Ooh, crab. So we're getting in there. I think we want to bully them here. I think I just want to play the Generous End. Okay, create a food token. Look at my 5-7s against your small, pathetic little 5-5. Five five. They hardcast Lorien Revealed. One blue. Yeah. Ah, uh, they have Snuff Out. So they're at 11 now. Ouch. We fall to 15. They Mental Note. They had a Gurmag. So now I'm incentivized to not use an Exhum unless I want them to have another Gurmag. Let's attack for five. And we'll pass the turn. Two mana. Unexpected Fangs. That's awkward. Okay. So it's a 6-6 six, six lifelink. I can try to combat trick it out here using an instant speed Exhum. So we will get back our 5-7 that will become a 6-7. Exhum. They have Counterspell. I will pitch Simeon Spirit Guide. And I will now Mirror Shell Crab the Counterspell. And now I can return the Mirror Shell Crab instead of the Generous End. No! Brutal! That is not nice. Okay. So now they're winning the race. That's not good. Into terror. Ah, oh, brutal. Brutal. Our arms have had are looking very pathetic this game. Yeah, I mean, we drew our wraths versus the matchup that they were bad. And that was a huge part of why we lost. So we lost game one even after I, I talked some trash, unfortunately. Um, so... Let's get the Arms of Hadar out. The problem is I don't really have a whole lot to board in in this matchup either. Like, do we want anything in our sideboard? I guess Ingot Chewers for possible Relics. I could Fairy Macabre. Fairy Macabre is actually probably decent versus their large creatures. Uh, let's get rid of the Suffocating Fumes. And I'll bring in one more Ingot Chewer. Let's try this. Game 2, we're on the play. All right, we have double actual exhum. So this is a turn two troll of Kazudum. Play the swamp, pass the turn. We'll cycle the troll. We have another swamp on our deck. Lorraine revealed. Exhum! Turn two troll. They play an archaeologist. Counterspell Terra Gurmag. Wow. All right, so maybe I don't want to use this other exhum. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Draw for turn. Lurian revealed. Let's attack for six. Hiya. Cycle a Lurian revealed. Let's just grab the basic island for now. We'll play it. Pass the turn. Brainstorm. They have an island. We'll cycle the river winder. Ooh, crap was a good one. All right, I'm going to cycle the elephant as well. And with this one, we're actually not going to grab a basic. I'm going to grab the tributary. Or should I grab the ridge line? All right, I think we probably want green mana, so I'll grab the ridge line. Attack for six. Now they're at eight. Pass the turn. Land number four. Deep analysis. Yeah, we're just going to let that happen. Like, you could counterspell it. I don't see the point. End step, we will cycle the elephant. 
Let's go grab the tributary this time for our double blue. They discard a terror. Simeon Spirit Guide. So if this connects, and I assume it's going to, uh, they'll go to two. And now Snuff Out has to be hard cast for the rest of the game. We'll pass here. And if by some chance our opponent plays an answer to troll, we can Lurian Revealed. They have Diabolic Edict. So we could tap them out with the Mirror Shell Crab into Lurian Revealed. I think that's my game plan here. Because this gives us a turn to resolve our draw three. All right, goodbye, troll. And we're looking to draw into a Bajuka Bog with this Lorian revealed. Another troll. I could hard cast troll here. Um, they don't have enough mana to flashback Chainer's Edict. So I think that's actually the move. All right, troll is back. A mental note. Brainstorm on the stack. They have nine cards currently in hand. Terror, okay. Looks like they have a Gurmag Angler. It's a little awkward. So now they have three blockers and two mana up for a counter spell. And the Bajuka Bog just far too late. Um, what to do, what to do? I think we start off by attacking. We're going to rearrange the blockers. Okay. We'll now play the Bajuka Bog. Target their graveyard. And let's attempt an exhum. I mean, they likely have counterspell at this point. And they do. We have to pass. All right. They have three cards in hand. Thorn of the Black Rose. Okay. So they're going to start pull ahead on card advantage using this thorn. We have an elephant. I think we just ha have to hard cast it here. It does trample over the Black Thorn for lethal. But they have Snuff Out and other things that they could have. They mill over Counter Spell. Scour. Brainstorm. They've seen so many cards at this point. Another Thought Scour. Getting rid of Spell Pierce. Another Gurmag Angler. Okay. Interesting. So they're swinging for six. I think I'm supposed to block. I'm not sure. If I don't block and I attack... I can kill two creatures, and then next turn... Okay, we'll take it. I guess it's better to eat up their Archaeologist. Oh, it's another target creature you control. I just misread that. Whoops. That's awkward. I'm at nine. I probably should have blocked then. Exhum. We will exhum. Do you have another counter spell? They do. Okay, awkward. Swing, swing. We will change the blocking order. And I think it's pretty unlikely that we win this one now. Our deck just doesn't have removal for large creatures in it. Maybe there's something we could play, but I think with the way that Popper's currently set up, the five main deck wraths end up being a lot better in so many more matchups than specifically Demir Terror. Um, I mean... Every deck has to have bad matchups or a way that they're not built to maximize. And it's just kind of tough for us to have answers against the deck with counter spell and spell pierces and everything because all of our cards have to be three or greater. And they have a terror here as well. I mean, they also saw a lot of cards this game. They're down to 18 cards left in their deck. About to be 17 with the trigger off the monarch. And, uh... The Ingot Chewer is not pulling their weight in this uh, game either. So, unfortunately, we're starting this video off 0-1. and one, But we did get to make some pretty sweet plays with Cascading into Exhum and stuff like that. So, hopefully, we get the next matches. But stick around and find out. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. All right, we are on the play for match number two. We have a Riverwinder. We have a pair of Riverwinders. No other land cyclers. So this hand is actually kind of risky. I'm going to Mulligan. 
This seems fine. We will keep in bottom one of the Lurian Revealeds. Alright, Haunch and Mire will pass the turn. No clue what our opponent's playing. Something with a basic swamp. Alright, well, I'm going to swamp cycle the troll. We'll grab a basic, pitch the spirit guide, exhum, turn to troll, pass. Another swamp, another exhum. Pretty good. Swing, swing. Cast down. Okay, so. I'm going to cycle the Lorraine Revealed. We'll go grab an island. And we'll exhum again. Pass. Alright, so we're facing the Gardens deck. There's a Colony Garden. Another troll. Love it. Swing, swing. Cause of Doom is really showing its pride tonight. All right, so let's... I can't mountain cycle at the moment, so let's cycle the Generous End. And if this gets hit by Bajooka Bog, we don't care as much. We'll grab the Ridge Line and pass. On our next turn, I can Violent Outburst, get back the Troll of Cause of Doom, or something else. They play Alembas. Mirror Shell Crabs, I can protect the Troll now. Interesting. All right, I think I'm going to cycle... I was contemplating holding this troll, so that way I could um, hardcast it later. But I think the way that this game is playing out, I want a Violent Outburst in my main phase. And by doing that, I have... My opponent's at 7, and they're more, closer to dead. It's just pretty much the answer. So I'm going to Violent Outburst again. We will exhume, bring back the troll... And now Violent Outburst resolves and our creature has 7 power. Another cast down, unfortunate. Okay. They Deadly Dispute. We only have one more Exhum left in our deck. Another Deadly Dispute. And our opponent has so many cards. They still have 8 cards in hand. Not feeling super confident at the moment. I think we're going to need our opponent to misplay a little bit for us to win this. Ooh, that gives me access to the fourth exhum swing. So they're going to go to eight, and we'll pass. Really wish I had one more mana right now, so that way I could double spell crypt rats. That's fine. So if I mirror shell crab, or I'm sorry, violent outburst, they would get back the thorn. I don't think I want that to happen, so we're just going to untap. Ooh. All right, let's attack. We can hold the bog for post-combat. Swing. They're now at two life. Play the bazooka bog. Target them. Spinning darkness. Sure. So they're at five still. We're going to pass the turn. They have land five, so now they have a ton of mana. They're holding priority. And we're going to counterspell the Reckoner's Bargain, and they're going to accidentally themselves this game uh sorry you don't get to gain life and now your own crypto rats will kill you all right we've taken game number one from black gardens interesting game i feel like the wrath effects are okay in this matchup they do have a couple creatures that are a little bit larger but they do clear colony garden stuff crypt rats stuff like that but I think we need, like, it's a deck with four relics in it, so I think we want some number of ingotures. Let's try this. We're on the drawing game two. I mean, I think it's a keep, but I don't love keeping the double Bajooka Bog hand. Turn one, Colony Garden. Land. Nope. We are forced to play a Bog. Pass the turn after that. They have turn two Lembas, so they will scry one and then draw a card. We'll draw for turn. We have a Demonic Dread. That's not bad. Let's cycle here first. I think we want the Molten Tributary. We'll play that and pass. I think if we can get a Riverwinder into play, it's going to be huge in this matchup. Relic of Progenitus. A little awkward. Exile the Lorian Revealed. I guess we do have the ingot chewer as well. Exhum! Alright, so we will evoke the ingot chewer. And we're going to stack it so that the way the destroy trigger happens first. 
And then we can keep our ingot chewer in the graveyard. So that does nothing, but they get to draw a card. And now we will cycle Generous Ent for a land. And that land will be, I don't know. Um, I think the Islet, because that allows me to cycle Riverwinder and then exhume. I guess, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking wrong. I just want blue mana. They Reckoner's Bargain into another Colony Garden. We draw a forest. Let's cycle the Riverwinder. Another Demonic Dread, like that. Exhum. Bring back the Riverwinder. I want to hang on to this Bajooka Bog, so we're going to keep that in our hand. They play a Lembas. And they play their fifth land into a Relic. Okay. Innocent Blood? What? That's not right. I, I'm not a fan. We will exile Exhum. That was just not right. Violent Outburst. I think we'll pass the turn here. The Relic will exile an Ingot Chewer. Five mana for Avenging Hunter. I think we want to counter this. And this gives us a window to bring back the Riverwinder as well. We'll bog them, exile the Avenging Hunter, and then we can Violent Outburst, play the Exhum, get back Riverwinder. Hope that this one sticks. Crypt Rats is back. Okay, I mean, that's one answer to Riverwinder, I suppose. I could Demonic Dread this turn and force them to crack the Relic, but then I'm going to lose the creature anyway to Crypt Rats. But they would take five damage, so maybe it's just worth it rather than sitting on a card I can't use in my hand. All right, Crypt Rats can't block. We'll exhume. Maybe it will make them sack the Relic. They do. So I could cycle the troll right now, but it's just going to die to the Crypt Rats, so I don't want to make that play. And they get a free outlet here. Oh, and then they're allowed to block with the... I mean, they're not going to. All right. I mean, they were never going to block. Maybe I just shouldn't have made this play. I don't know. They'll attack for one. We'll fall to 19. Attack for five. And they Crypt Rats. We'll play the bog or tap the bog i mean ignore me and we will cast troll of cause doom all right so they're at five they're drawing up to six cards they're at 16 life i feel like they've stabilized this game but we have to hope that they flood it out another troll okay not bad they have a cast down unfortunate play another troll defile Ooh, Deadly Dispute, Blood Fountain. So now they can get back their Crypt Rats. Maybe I want to bring in the Macabs here. I don't know. They're just so far ahead, I feel like. They have three cards in hand. They have a ton of Lembas. And if I exhume, they're just going to bring back the Crypt Rats. We have to pass. They have another Deadly Dispute. I mean, I think we're supposed to just keep on casting stuff that we can and hope that I draw the third Bajooka Bog at some point. Another Defile. They get back the Crypt Rats. Sure. Lorraine Revealed. Let's Demonic Dread the Crypt Rats. Why did I tap like that? I don't have Black open for Exhum now. Ugh. All right, we're going to go to game three. I don't think I'm actually capable of winning this game. We did leave in two suffocating fumes. That was something I wondered about. I was like, how many of those are in my sideboard? Here's a crazy thought. What if I brought out some number of demonic dread? Because it just seems like this is a matchup where I'm going to run out of exhumes. Bring in a couple of fairies. I'm going to try this. Game three. Sure, this seems fine. Opponent is playing 61 cards. They mulligan to five. Play an islet past the turn. Colony Garden. Mirror Shell Crab. We'll pass. I think I'm supposed to cycle the Lorien Revealed for a red source, which would be the Mortuary Tributary or something like that. There's the Relic. We do have our Chewer, though. 
cycle. Grab our tributary. Sure. Exile our Lorien Revealed. Riverwinder. They have four cards in hand. Evoke the Ingot Chewer. Destroys Relic. They deadly dispute it. We'll pass the turn. Crypt Rats. Hmm. I think I'm going to crab this. They play an Ecker Wellspring. This will bring them up to four cards. Troll. Okay. Cycle Troll. Grab Bog. Play the Bog. Pass on their end step. We can Violent Outburst. Thorn of the Black Rose is a little obnoxious. So I wonder if I want the Troll now, because the Troll could give me the Monarch. All right, we're going to exile these two. Red, Violent Outburst. Cast the Exhum. Get back Troll. And they just became the Monarch. We will attack for six. They cannot block. Woot woot. And now I'm going to Hardcast Saving Spirit Guide. So this does two things. One, it stops them from getting the Monarch back. And two, it theoretically gives us an Edict. Uh, or something to sacrifice to an Edict. We draw off the Monarch. Suffocating Fumes. Ripped Rats. Sure. And they use it immediately because they want the Monarch back that badly. That's interesting. I go to 17. They are now the Monarch. Colony Garden. Generous Ent. So now we'll attack for 6. They'll go to 6. They have 4 cards in hand. So I have a couple options here. I could Suffocating Fumes. So that way they don't get back the Monarch. Or at least for one turn. Or I can just play out a, a Generous Ent. I guess I can't play Riverwinder. I'm one mana short. I think I just want to keep the Monarch. Okay. They're going to combat. Let's cast Suffocating Fumes. They play a Lemba, so they get to scry one and then draw a card. This could be the match right here, depending on what the scry reveals. Oh, I guess they get to the gain three, so that buys them a turn. Okay. Still four cards in hand. Attack with the Troll of Kazadoom. Ah, they have the cast down. Okay. I guess Generous Ent lives through Defile, and they left in Defile, so we should play that. We will pass. They Reckoner's Bargain, sacrificing the Wellspring, so they're going to draw three cards here. We draw Bajuka Bog. Innocent Blood, no! That's so brutal. So now they're going to get back the Monarch. Avenging Hunter... That might be the game. Colony Garden. I just don't know how we're going to come back from this. Play the Elephant. Fast the turn. So the Revenging Hunter is a 7-6. Chainer's Edict. Yeah. So next turn they get to go into Trap. So I'm taking 7-8. Going to 8. They have Trap next turn. I mean, we were pretty close, but our opponent's list is a little weird. I've never seen Innocent Blood in any of these deck lists before, but really good against us in particular. So we'll play the Aquifier into another Elephant. Pass the turn. May have cast down. Okay, so that is the match. That was a good one. Unfortunately, we lost, but that was a pretty good match. So we're 0-2, three matches left. This deck is grindy. I think there's a lot of potential here, but maybe we need to find a way to put in some top-end removal of some, some, some sort. If you have any ideas, put those in the comment section down below. But I do think there's something here, but we haven't gotten the matchups for our five main deck Wraths. So maybe we need some sort of removal spell that would help us out. Once again, you got ideas, put them down. But we're going to go to match three in the meantime. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the 
epicsfarm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Match number three. Let's try to get this one. We're on the play. Sure, we'll keep. Play first turn. Aquafire past the turn. They play an island. In our upkeep, let's search out a land. Let's thin. Grab the ridge line. We'll take a draw. Violent outburst. That's exactly what I wanted. Thank you. Okay, they're just going to hold open two blue. Generous Ent. Play a swamp. I am so dumb. I should have played them out in there. Whoops. Now I can't violent outburst. Awkward. Yeah, that was not ideal. You know, sometimes you formulate a plan, and then when it comes to take that action, you do the exact correct opposite thing of correct. Uh, it just stinks. And we're facing Demir Terror again. Fun, fun, fun. All right, so they play their ice tunnel. Let's cycle the troll. Grab the Haunted Mire, I guess. Simeon Spirit Guide. We'll just pass here. And our opponent wants to play Drago. Haunted Mire. The Crab was a very good draw for us. And they're going to pass with seven in hand. Demonic Dread. Think I want to cycle the Generous End. I wasn't sure because I was kind of holding it to Hardcast later, but I think we're probably just supposed to make our land drops. We'll pass. And now they Brainstorm. Interesting. They're going to redraw off the Brainstorm. So no Mental Note or anything like that on their end step. I think we should just play a Simian Spirit Guide here. I am the Beatdown. You will learn that. Pass. Now they thought scour. Mills over a snuff out. Another brainstorm. And it looks like they're going to pass here. Discards deep analysis. Let's bazooka bog them. Get in there. Because I am the bringer of pain. Take two. Alright, more monkey business. Simian spirit guide. Hiya. The opponent's just going to clean up again. Too afraid to cast spells versus my monkeys. Exhum. Play a land. Let's get in there. Swing, swing. Yes, they're at 14. We'll pass. Deep analysis targeting them. Sure. They've made their land drop. And now they're going to clean up with two cards extra. They discard double terror. Okay, let's go to combat. I would love to win this game via Simeon Spirit Guy beatdown. I think that would be the greatest thing. They're at seven. We will bog them. Pass. They scour themselves. Mills over another terror. We will counterspell the Gurmag. And they concede! Simeon Spirit Guide is far too powerful for Pauper. That's just how it is. Uh, that was awesome. Okay, so let's bring in Fairy Macabs. Uh, we don't need the Arms of Hadar. Those can get boarded out. I think I want to board out the Suffocating Fumes again for Inga Chewers. I don't know if they even have um, Nile Spell Bombs, but I think it's best that we have an answer. And it's not like Suffocating Fumes is great. It's pretty much only relevant in combat trick situations. This hand's pretty good. And there's the Spell Bomb. Okay, play our Ridgeline Pass. Two mana for an Archaeologist, so they can return a Brainstorm here. We'll draw for turn, it's a Violent Outburst. We'll play our Island, and then Evoke Ingature. Goodbye, Spellbomb. We'll pass the turn after that. They play a Tapped Ice Tunnel. Let's cycle the Troll. And we will grab Geothermal Bog, I guess. I don't know. Riverwinder. That's definitely a card I'm interested in. And step they brainstorm. And then mental note. They have a rotted reunion. So they have spell bombs and rotted reunions. Interesting. They cast deep analysis. That's fine. Is this a Gurmag Angler? It is. A little annoying. Okay. On their end step, let's 
Violent Outburst. Cast the Exhume. Get back the Troll. And now we'll go to Combat. Crash in. And then we'll cycle Riverwinder. And then Exhume. Get back the Striped Riverwinder. Pass the turn. A Brainstorm. I mean, maybe I was supposed to play Bog just to exile the Rotted Reunion so they don't get a blocker. Maybe that was an oversight on my part. A Mental Note. Dispel and Snuff Out. Another Mental Note. Terror for one mana. Okay. Let's go to combat. Swing, swing. We will change the blocking order. And they'll take five going down to six. Play a Bazooka Bog. Exile their graveyard. And I think I want to try my luck here with another outburst. Like they have to have exactly spell pierce here. Cast the exhume. And it looks like they do have it. Yep. Okay. Unfortunate. We have to pass. They scour themselves. Again. This looks like another angler. And it is. Womp womp. They attack for five. I will fall to 15. This might be crazy, but am I supposed to hard cast the Fairy Macabre here? <laughs> like, I kind of feel like it might not be the craziest thing in the world. Swing. Okay. They have three cards in hand. We, I don't think we've seen a single Counterspell yet. So the odds they have Counterspell in hand are super high. We'll go to 10. Another Fairy. Swing for two. Player land, Fairy Macabre. It resolves. Come on, no removal, no removal. Two two beat down for the win. Nice. We got our first match win. We are now one and two. I love it. All right, let's try to get the last two and finish with a positive record. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Round number four, we're on the draw, and I believe that this hand is a keep. I mean, we have access to Exhum via Violent Outburst, we have some large creatures, we have lands. I mean, the hand plays magic. Basic Forest. Arms of Hadar. Okay. Another basic forest. Winding. Are we facing walls? We are. Kind of a slow opener for walls. Okay. We find the tributary. We'll play that and pass. Next turn we can Violent Outburst. But I can't imagine that this is a good matchup for us. Yeah. You have a wall of roots. Ranger. We'll cycle the Troll of Cause of Doom. Go grab Swamp. Play the Swamp. And then we'll pass. We can just Violent Outburst on their end step. They lead the Stampede. Alright, well they found a lot of pretty good cards. So, not loving my odds at the moment. We need f to connect four times with the Troll. Findhorn, okay. So I think how we win this now is that our opponent gets a little bit mana screwed. And step we tap for green, red, black, violent outburst. And we'll cascade, find the exhume, riverwinder. Okay. I think we just want to keep them off mana. So what we're going to do here is just kill their dorks. Okay, that's resolved. And now we'll attack for six. Hiya. All right, they're at 14. We have to pass. They play an Axe Bane Guardian. We have no removal that hits a three toughness creature on our main deck. We find another Exhume, but I don't think it's actually worth playing because we'd be giving them back Aquarian Ranger. So the best possible thing that could happen here is I cycle Stripe Riverwinder into Bajooka Bog, and that could give us a real chance at winning. So we'll cycle the Riverwinder. Holy moly, we did it. Okay. Called shot. Had it the whole time. And now I will cycle the troll. Grab Swamp, I guess. Because that allows us to cast an end next turn. We'll exhume. Get back the troll. 
Look at us being a combo deck and whatnot. I love it. Can you win right now with your Axe Bane Guardian? They have four mana. Five. Okay, so they use the Wall of Roots. Read from the real. So they have infinite mana. That's unfortunate. Okay, so they had the, like, free, just so you know, Freed from the Real is a singleton. The odds that they had it were not super high. But now they have infinite mana, and they have to demonstrate that they have a win. Uh, right now, they have shown me that they have a whole bunch of walls in their hand, plus this thing. But this thing would need haste in order to win. They don't have haste. All right, so they've played a few more walls. Another Axe Bane Guardian. Elvish Mystic. So we know two of their last three. Uh, so they have the uh, the Shield Sentinel. This should be the win. I don't know why they waited so long to play that. So now they can go get... They have Tuck Tuck Rumble for it. That's what they got. I mean, they don't have a way to untap the Vent Sentinel. Sure. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but this would only deal me like 10. I feel like there was a better way for them to win this game with infinite mana and a tutor. So they have finally played the Vent Sentinel. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight creatures with Defender. Sure, I'm at 12. And now they're just passing the turn. Like, they definitely had a way to win with the Shield Sentinel, and I think that they just missed it. All right, so how many blockers do they have? Nine, so they... Me casting this gets back a Riverwinder for next turn. Is that even good? Alternatively, I could cycle the Generous Scent, which would gain three life. Yeah, I think that's just better. We'll grab the Basic Forest, play that. And now we'll Demonic Dread. Elvish Mystic can't block, I guess. I don't know. Uh, sure. We'll Exume. Get back the Ent. Creates a food token. We'll just gain some life right now, going up to 15. And then we'll go to combat. Swing, swing. They have to block at least one of them. Okay, so they'll go to two. Sure. All right, do you get to top deck the win? That's the real thing here. Oh, they drew a spell. They drew another tutor. Ugh, come on. Uh, no justice. Let's see if they can figure out the win this time. Yep, they figured it out. You're supposed to get that last turn. And now you can just go get one of a dozen cards that kills me here. Wow. So they've transmuted twice. They went and got Reaping the Graves, which will be for two. So now they can get back both Drift of Phantasms. Our opponent's kind of just wasting time right here, but they've already used 10 minutes of their clock and still haven't figured out how to win yet. So I'm just going to let them click. They replay a Shield Wall Sentinel. And they grab another. So they're just trying to create a density of defender creatures, I guess. There's so many cards that make winning with this deck very easy. Like a Flamewood Invoker. There, there's a bunch of them. There's also a black one that loses life. Like, there's a lot of cards you could play. And our opponent's just taking, like, the longest possible route to, win, to winning the game. We're only in game one. So they went and got Galvanic Alchemist. Now with infinite mana, they can ping me with the Sentinel multiple times. So they found the win. Uh, a little bit convoluted for no reason, but they, they got there. So they drew the win. Uh, unfortunate that their draw step was, you know, a Demonic Tutor. But there's still games two and possibly even game three for us to try to win. Do I like Fairy Macabre here? I don't know. I think Reverend Silence is a little bit of a trap because they really just have the one freed from the real. And if your opponent's good, they should win the same turn that they play it. So holding on to this, I feel like might be a little bit of a trap. I think I want the Fairy Macabs though. We'll try boarding out a couple Lorien Revealed maybe. Or do I board out River Winders because like they just have a lot of chump blockers? I don't even know. Maybe we'll do one in one. Let's try this. On the play. This is a turn two Riverwinder. I think I'm good to try this. Play the Aquafire and then we'll pass the turn. Forest into Elf. You got it. Suffocating Fumes was a huge draw there. We'll cycle the Riverwinder. Now we need to find another land. Arms of Hadar. Okay. 
really hardening the cards here, heart of the cards. We need to find land three. They play a caretaker, Burian Ranger. Come on. Ugh. All right, so we'll swing. I think I'm supposed to cycle one of these, hoping to spike a land. We have a lot of tap lands in our deck, so doing it in the main phase is probably just what's best. Cycle a Suffocating Fumes. We found it. Another Caretaker. They pick up their land, they replay it. Three cards in their hand. Lead the Stampede. Two cards, a Overgrown Battlement and a Tuk Tuk Rumble Fort. There's the Battlement. They still have three cards in hand. Not sure what the right play is here. So I can cycle and go get the basic swamp, but I that doesn't help me cast either of these. I'm like super far away from Violent Outburst. I think I'm supposed to just get the basic. Try to slow them down. I don't know why I'm playing that at sorcery speed. It doesn't make any sense, but here I am. And they're at 10. They play the Rumble Fort. Now they have four green. X being Guardian, two cards left. You have the win. Another Axe Bane. What's your last card? They're not going to show us. We have two Ward Sweepers, but every single creature they have in play has a toughness greater than three or greater. So it doesn't really help us here. We'll attack for five. They block with the Rumble Fort. Let's cycle the fumes in case I draw into a land that I could play. Okay, I mean, that's similar. Uh, we'll cycle the Ent, and I think we want the Ridge Line. Pass the turn. Okay, they play. Did I know that their last card was a Forest? I don't know. We'll attack with Riverwinder. They wisely block. I think I'm supposed to just cycle the elephant i'm um, i can't cast it i'm a mana short let's just make sure that we're able to play our spells we'll grab a geothermal bog and play it they have the flamewood invoker so yeah our opponent was just showboating in game one and now they're down to eight minutes so if we win this game there's a good chance that they could time out in game number three they're going to deal me three i go to 17. we draw exhum attack for five okay they're going to block I think we just pass here. Like, I could theoretically exhum or violent outburst or whatever, assuming that our opponent didn't have a grave here, but I haven't drawn a bazooka bog this game. Vivian's Grizzly. Also, every creature, three butt. It's not fair. They activate the Grizzly. They put that card on the bottom. They activate it again. This time they reveal a Drift of Phantasms, so that wins the game on their next turn. What to do here? I could end up Violent Outburst for Troll, but that doesn't win. I think we have to take a big swing because right now we're just not doing anything. I could also get the Elephant, which would give my Riverwinder Trample. Maybe that's the line. Oh, they had Fairy Macabre this whole time? Oh, come on. Oh, it's so brutal. Oh, geez. Just devastating. So my generous scent happens. They get back the rumble fort. They're at 10 troll. All right, I'm going to demonic dread on the rumble fort. So now they have to block with either the grizzly or the invoker. I'm not going to cast the exhum. We're seeing in this match too where the 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 five wraths have been not good enough. Like they're really for like the mono red deck and decks like that, but we haven't faced any of them, and they've just looked so bad this entire league. All right, we have to pass. And this should be pretty easy for our opponent. But they decided to start off on a winding way. Another Axe Bane Guardian. They play a Shield Ball Sentinel. Yep. They're now transmuting the Drift of Phantasms, and they're getting another Drift? This is so greedy. Why wouldn't you just go get the Freed from the Reel and win the game? Okay. Sure. I don't know what our opponent's doing at this point. Uh, they're under three minutes. They have an easy win. I think they're just proving that they could beat me with like three seconds left on their clock or something. Uh, I'm not really sure what's happening here. All right, they've now played their Vent Sentinel. And they're transmuting with 15 mana floating. 
Okay, so they will now pair with the Event Sentinel, so that way they can just deal me damage equal to the number of defenders. And that's the match. So we are now one in three, and uh, not loving the Wrath so far this league. Unfortunate. Well, uh, there's one match left. Let's see if we can get that one. The Command Tower software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting your own magic events with features such as easy to create event registration for four player and one on one Swiss based games. Event management has never been so simple and it's done on the web. No downloads are required. You can sign up for $5 by visiting eminence.events slash subscribe. Can we earn back 50 play points? Let's find out. We're on the draw for match number five. Black Gardens again. Okay. We'll play a Swamp, pass the turn. On their end step, we will cycle the Lorien Revealed, and we'll go get the Tributary. Doink! Okay. Play it and pass. They deadly dispute their plant token into a Lembas. Okay. I'd really like to draw a Striped Riverwinder here, and we do not. I think I'm going to cycle a Fumes hoping to hit land. It's kind of like a land. Uh, we'll pitch Simeon Spirit Guide. Cycle the Elephant. Grab the Ridge Line. Play it and pass. Main deck Bajooka Bog. Okay. Llanowar Visionary. I think we'll just pass here. We will counterspell the Avenging Hunter. No, you don't get to have that. Golgari Rot Farm, so they can pick up the Bajuka Bog here. Their list seems to be very heavy green. A lot of the lists that I've seen haven't been. Exile your graveyard. And then let's exhume. Pass the turn. They have the cast down. It's unfortunate. And now they have Bajuka Bog as well. They didn't play Bajuka Bog. Interesting. Well, I guess I'll exhume then. Shame on you. They deadly dispute away the visionary, and then it comes back and they'll draw. Yeah. Icker Wellspring, sure. Llanowar Visionary again. Ash Barons, okay. Into Blood Fountain. So there's no point in me using Arms of Hadar if they're just going to get them back with the Blood Fountain. Another Exhum. Swing. We'll pass. Rancid Earth. They're on a weird list. I guess I'll mana leak it? I don't know. Okay, I've uh, attempted to mana leak it. They paid the three, my land is in the graveyard. Snuff out. Yep. Into a bazooka bog. Yeah, that hurts. Ah, crap. I meant to cycle the fumes on the end step and then I didn't. Whoops. I mean, we've lost this game already anyway, but... Alright, I'm gonna concede. Okay. I think we want Fairy Macabre. They have main deck. Bogs. Do we think that they have spell bombs on the board? I don't know. I guess it's sort of free to bring in the Ingot Chewers. Game number two, on the play. Sure, yeah, this seems reasonable. Play the Islet, pass the turn. They have a Duress. So I think the actual pick here is the Lorien Revealed. Let's see what they choose. They could take the Demonic Dread, but I think Lorien Revealed is actually the best pick because it allows me to set up my mana. They go after the Demonic Dread, sure. In our upkeep, we will cycle the Lorien Revealed. Go grab the Aquifier. Pass the turn. They just play a land and pass. We'll play a bog and pass. So now we have perfect mana. We just have to find a cascade spell or exhume. Rancid Earth. Not a fan of you destroying my lands. Cycle Riverwinder. Sure. Thing I want to hold. Like, I don't want to play into Bajuka Bog, so I'm holding my creatures. We draw exhume. Perfect. We will bring back the Riverwinder. Let's hope that our opponent's list is not full of edict effects. Colony Garden, so this will give them a blocker. And they have Chainer's Edict. Ah, oh, that's so brutal. Yep. Cycle the Generous End. Grab a Ridgeline. 
We just have to pass the turn. We will counterspell the Avenging Hunter using Mirshell Crab. I have three cards in hand. So I could Demonic Dread here, but they would get back their Avenging Hunter, and I don't want that to happen. I will cycle a Riverwinder. Looking for Bajooka Bog. Hey! Hey! Perfect. And now we can Demonic Dread again. Target your plant. Cast Exhum. And I just want the Riverwinder. Another Avenging Hunter. Okay. Yeah. So we're in a little bit of trouble here. Another Oliphant. Attack for five. They're going to block with the plant. Okay. We will exile Simming Spirit Guide and then play the Elephant. There's no point in blocking the Avenging Hunter with the Elephant unless you're trying to just beat removal because it's going to trample over anyway. So now it becomes a 7-6. Vampire Sovereign. They're on a wild list. This is not normal. They pick up the Colony Garden. And they're just leaving the entire team back. Interesting. Okay, well, we're going to get in there. That's what we came here to do. Swing, swing. My Riverwinder becomes a 7-5. Okay. So I gain the initiative, which gives me the ability to search out a basic here. We'll definitely do that because it makes it so I can keep my Simian Spirit Guide. Um, I guess Swamp? I don't really have any strong opinions. We'll play it and then play another Elephant. Cast down. So now we just have the Riverwinder. We know that they have a blocker with Colony Garden. So they gain the initiative again, and now they get to forge, so it's going to become a... I know, they've already forged. Uh, so this becomes trap. So I would go to nine. And that's what happens, I'm at nine. And they destroy my land, sure. Attack with the Riverwinder. They block. And have... their last card was Deadly Dispute, which is huge, wow. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Not feeling so confident in our ability to win this one anymore. Pass the turn. Another copy of Colony Garden. Thorn of the Black Rose. Yeah, so now I'm going to six, and they get to go to Archives, which draws them another card. And then they draw a card off Monarch. Does Exhum do anything here? I don't think it does. It gets them back Avenging Hunter, and we get like a creature that doesn't beat the Thorn anyway. I'm going to pick it up. We've lost this game, unfortunately. So 1-4 and four is not the record that I was hoping for when I signed up for this league. I'll be completely honest with you. So this is the list that we were playing. And I was doing some thinking throughout the league. And there's a couple different ways you could build this deck. And this is actually a list that I had previously. But I made a small change to it with some thoughts from the league. So I admittedly forgot about Snuff Out as a expensive card you could play for free. My list already had Spitting Darkness, and that was sort of the concept behind the Jund list, because you need a heavy density of black cards. So here, you have a ton of black cards like Horror of the Broken Lands. You're playing less of the Land Cyclers. Uh, you are playing a Gloomfang Mauler just because it's black. You need cards that are black to exile to Spinning Darkness. So this list has that. You get to play four Bajooka Bogs when you go down a color as well. You get more untapped lands. You have seven basics. So something like this might be worth exploring as well. Um, I don't think that this deck is really a Dread Return deck just because I just don't think you need it. Like you have 12 Exhumes and the issue is not really finding ways to put creatures into play. It was kind of just like our opponents always having it or putting their own stuff into play. I don't know. Maybe this archetype just isn't good. But I think that it's worth exploring because cascading into Exhum giving you trouble that effect is pretty powerful and you do have some free removal with spitting darkness and snuff out and stuff like that so try it out if you have any good ideas on how to improve the deck i would love to hear from you uh thanks for watching i really do appreciate it and i hope you have a great day see ya hey thanks for watching today's video make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and after you do that click that join button it contains all of our membership information such as access to our members exclusive discord members exclusive videos and the best perk in my opinion you can watch all of our videos early one to two weeks in advance that way you're always up to date on the latest and greatest content